I remember when I read the script, I said, if this is realized anything like it reads, it's going to be bananas. And turns out from the first 30 seconds, you're just like, whoa, you're just strapping in and getting ready for the blast off. And it's, it's what happens, you know, for a film that is so, I think, historically relevant and genuinely entertaining. It's, uh, I mean, it's like, you know, it's Hitchcock, it's Kubrick, it's all these weird kind of manipulations of your psyche and your heart and all that stuff. IMAX is incredible. And realizing that IMAX has never had something like this where literally new versions and iterations of how IMAX is even experienced obviously are, are taken to this next level by Chris Nolan and co. Um, but also just to see whether it's the Trinity test site or a extreme close-up of, of Killian as Oppenheimer, you're just like, you feel like you're standing next to something that's really happening in history. It's a huge uh, film experience, but it feels very small and focused and kind of intimate when you're doing it, and I think that translates. Um, there's also the onus is on you to rise to the occasion, and, and Chris tends to uh, cast and collect folks around him that are um, as without ego as possible while still having some self-respect and thinking they can get the job done. And so it was a journey into it reminded me of back doing theater. It reminded me of, you know, what my first instincts and hopes and dreams were for being an actor. That day where uh, Conti and Murphy are having their little sidebar tete-a-tete, -tete, um, and I could tell uh, Chris knew it was a, obviously a critical scene. It's kind of the heart of the film. I'm there as kind of a uh, hapless and pissed off observer who misinterprets the whole thing. And it was like, wow, we're shooting this part of the movie now. And this is where his vision, this is kind of the spinning top at the end of Inception moment for this, except this is a historic occurrence. This is about our real lives on this real planet here and now. And I was like, yeah, this is kind of important. Uh, and then I just always try to just say, re remember this, take a mental picture of this. This is really cool. This is the kind of stuff you were hoping to do when you were a teenager. So you got one. You got one in. You know? <laughs> well, first I was just looking at pictures. And I'm, I'm just trying to see if I can really find him in there. And I felt like I had a bit of communion with him. I mean, with something like Chaplin, there's so much reference that you're kind of on the hook to be able to match the reference. And with him, I felt kind of free to explore my own understanding of him. And I came to love the guy and have a lot of empathy for him. And I think he also represents any of us that have ever felt blown off by someone that has a higher status. And also um, that act of a deniable, plausible, non-traceable revenge. Just how sweet it is. Um, so it's just a human condition as he represents it. Well, I was just texting with Josh Hartnett a few days ago, and um, I, I don't think he knows how good he is in the film. Obviously, you know, Matt and Emily and Florence, and I, I got to watch Rami Malek just absolutely slay it on this one day and put my character in check. I spent many of my days with Alden Ehrenreich. He and I are now close friends. Scott Grimes was there. And it, it was, it just seemed like every day was another one of my peers knocking it out of the park. And there was this kind of almost like regional theater vibe amongst all of us. Like, you know, this is who we are and this is what we do. And this is a, a peak 
uh, experience. Detonator's charge. Three, two, one. Oppenheimer, solo en cine.